to Ottawa Gladiator High School, where tonight in the Division Four District Championship game, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs tangle with the Kaleida Wildcats. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Scott, Mag, and our entire WSN crew. And Scott, we take a look at both these teams, and they had a, a tough one back in December where Grove defeated them 35-34. Yeah, uh, and, and again, we this these two teams play in the same league. They play each other every year, and they're 10 miles from one another. It's <laughs> like they're playing their uh, backyard neighbors every, and uh, I believe uh, one of the coaches short, shared with us five of the last six years they faced yes. each other in tournament as well. So there's a lot of fam familiarity with both of these teams. Let's take a look at the keys for both teams to bring home a district championship. Uh, keys, I got the three Ps. Paint, pressure, and perimeter shooting. Now pressure, it kind of goes on to what we were just talking about, where their familiarity with both teams, knowing one another, so the pressure is going to be is can you execute when the other team knows sure. exactly what you're going to do? Are you going to be able to maybe throw in a little new wrinkle, something that you put in these last couple of days of practice? The only bad thing about when you play in a tournament, you got one or two days. So there's a lot of pressure. you got to put new things in. you got to be able to execute when the team knows exactly what you're doing. The second is paint. Columbus Grove has to do a good job of controlling number 24, Camille Hovis, the 5'9 post player who is very, very, very good in the paint. And if uh, she gets going, so does Kaleida. And last but not least is perimeter shooting. Now, on the other hand, that is Columbus Grove's uh, strength. Kaleida has to do a good job getting out to their shooters. Ock Moody especially, they run a lot of plays, little single high screens. Her coming off a double screen, uh, what they do is pass, pick away. She comes off a, a double screen and, and gets open shots. And if you do over try to take away her, she'll penetrate and kick it to another open uh, three-point shooter. So each team has a strength. One wants to pound it inside. The other one wants to shoot outside. So again, that's our three Ps, pressure, paint, and perimeter shooting. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for both teams. For Kaleida, they come in at 18 and six. Offensively, they average 43.5 a game. Defensively, they give up 30.8 a game. They will start number three, Andrea Bergai, a 5'4 junior at 3.8 a game. Number 20, Liv Recker, is a 5'5 senior at 6.5 a game. Number 22, Meredith Bockrath is a 5'5 sophomore at 4.9 a game. Number 23, Brooke Earhart, is a 5'8 senior at 4.5. And rounding out the starting five is number 24, Camille Hobus, a 5'9 senior at 9.5 a game. The Cats are coached by Adam Huber. For the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, they'll come in at 16 and 8. Offensively, they average 48.1 a game. And defensively, they give up 35.3 a game. They will start number two, Lauren Achmoody, a 5'6 sophomore. Number three, Jalen Souders, a 5'8 senior. Number five, Bryn Fortman is a 5'6 senior. Number 12, Sage Clement is a 5'4 senior. And number 23, Nicole Nesby is a 5'11 freshman. They are coached by Brian Schrader. So partner, the gym's filling up, a district championship's on the line. Two teams that know each other should be a good one. Yeah, absolutely, I'm excited to get this one under the way. When we come back, we'll have the tip off and all the action right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Ottawa Glendorf High School for tonight's district championship game. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Scott, we take a look at both of these teams, and both of them start three seniors. They've played each other, like you said, five of six times the last six years. They played a one-point game this year. Where do you find an advantage in something like this? Well, I, I think you, you have to find out through the year, you know, you said they played back in December, so again, yeah. you're not that same team anymore. Sure. So you may have thought at the beginning of the year you were going to throw the ball inside or you were going to be a pressing team, and maybe now you're not. Uh, you want to try to – I'm sure they each coaches – these guys have been doing it a long time, but they got maybe another little wrinkle to try to uh, combat some of the familiarity sure. that each team knows. But I would look that each team's going to bring out something that they didn't see, like maybe a full court press, maybe some sort of trap, or maybe uh, one of those JD players, right, that played all year, that's going to come in and it's going to give them maybe some outside shooting or some post play defense or something that they have developed throughout the whole year playing the JD. So, you know, tournament, it is familiarity, it is the same thing, but usually every team has some sort of wrinkle that they bring out for another team and it's usually 
that person that no one thinks of that comes in and, and uh, does something special, <laughs> right, allows right. you to win the game. Well, let's look at Columbus Grove coming in 16-8, and eight, and they got a huge win uh, their last game out where they defeated Lipsick, and I don't think a lot of people expected them to win that game, and they no. they pulled it off 55-51. Right, and, and they were down, I think, 15 at halftime. Yes. So, I mean, there's probably a lot of people that are in the seats tonight <laughs> that at halftime thinking, oh, right. my gosh, we ain't going to have to come back on Saturday. But, you know, it, it's amazing that the three-point shot can – take you out of a game, sure. but it sure the heck can get you right back in and Absolutely. Grove used that to their advantage. So we are ready to tip it off here in the Division Four District Championships from Ottawa Glendorf High School. Danny Holbrook and Scott Mag bringing you all the action tonight here on WOSN. Kaleido will control the tip. They'll take it up on the left side and they knock it in. Yep. Two nothing on the Hucker Drywall scoreboard. Meredith Bachrath with the two. Kaleido right. comes out quick in it. Half court press here. Grove look taking across the timeline. It looks like they're in some man-to-man, -man, but I'm saying Buckrath ain't going to get too far away from Mahmoud. I bet you she's going to be in, in glue mode all game. This is Lauren Ockmoody out top. She'll dribble to the foul line. Bring it back out. Looks inside. Tries to push it inside to Nicole Nesby. They'll swing it around to Souter. Souter brings it to the foul line. Kicks it back out. Thought about taking a three. Yeah, though, Fortman but, yeah. thought. Yeah, but thought of it. Yeah. <laughs> this is Akmudi with the ball. She gets a screen up top, dribble drive to the middle, she goes to the right side, takes it up, and there's a foul called. And she'll go to the line for two. So there you see the athleticism of Lauren Akmudi as she goes from the top of the key yeah. all the way on the right side. And and what really impressed me even when we played her, how well she is. You know, she does really. She kind of weaves and yeah. is very patient there. You know, she kind of backpedaled. She changed the pace, got to the rim. And, 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 you know, she could have probably pulled up, but threw it out. But she kind of stutter stepped there and got all the way into the paint. So Lauren Ackman, knocks in the first one. Makes it two to one on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Second on the way. And that two is good. So we're all knotted up at two. Plato inbounds the ball. This is Liv Wrecker. She'll bring the ball down. She's guarded out top by Sage Clement. Gonna swing it around the top of the perimeter. Try to push the ball down low. Yeah, look, they're really playing off of Buckrath and, and really doubling down on Camille Hovis in there in the paint. They're not even guarding her, so she says, heck, I'll take it. Three Natural ball on the way, and it's good. <laughs> Meredith Buckrath, she's got all five for the catch right now. That's right. Well, if you're not going to guard me, I'm going to make you pay, <laughs> she absolutely. says. Absolutely. Makes it 5-2 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Three ball from the left side for Columbus Grove. Off the mark, rebound comes down. It'll go back to Grove. Jalen Souter with the ball out top. She dribble drives to the middle, loses the ball, and it goes out of bounds. Souter said, no, that yeah. ball was hit out of bounds. And the officials say, nope, it's going back to Kaleida. Wildcats up 5-2, 14 to go. All oh, Meredith Bachrath right now. She's got all five points for the Kaleida Wildcats. They'll swing it out. This is Burgai. Burgai looks down to the post. Over to the side. They'll go back inside to Hovis. Hovis a little move. Takes it up. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to Ockmoody. Ockmoody double teamed in the backcourt. She'll bring it up across the timeline. Goes between her legs. Swings it around the perimeter. Nesby gets a screen out top. This is Souter with the shot. Good rebound. Good box Good out. Good box. I was going to just exactly right, Scott. Nesby got boxed out by yeah. two Wildcats. Oh, what a hustle back by Nesby. Great hustle. Wow, Nicole Nesby yeah. runs the floor. And look, that, that is picture perfect yes. from a post player. Absolutely. Running hard, getting down to play the defense. That's a great job. So Clyde will take it out underneath their basket. Burgat tries to go middle, gets into Hovis. Hovis guarded by Nesby, takes it straight up, and she's off the mark, but she'll go to the line for two. So there you saw Camille Hovis gets down low on the post, and she's going to go to the line to shoot two. That foul will be on number 23, Nicole Nesby. And what I like about uh, Hovis is she she's very good with her body and get position, and uh, she's, she's very quick. When she has a move down there, she does, does it quickly, doesn't let the other teams double-team her, right? She, she gets rid of it before that 
Double team comes. And she knocks in the first one, makes it 6-2 on the Hawker Drywall score. Yeah. I like uh, Nicole Nesby, a freshman, not, not intimidated at all. And there you see a big right. rebound by Nesby there as she's playing a force in the middle right now. She screens for Akmudi up top. Akmudi goes to the right side, Ooh. tries to take it in. And they're they're going to say foul, she, yeah. yeah, they're going to say a foul Buckrath. on the floor. And that foul's on Buckrath. There is Buckrath. Foul. That's her first foul. That's the team's second. So Columbus Grove will trigger the ball out of bounds. This is Clement with the ball. Looks for Nesby down low. Gets it out top. That ball stolen away. It comes collided down the middle. They'll bring it right down the middle. Thought about taking the three out top. Swing it back into Hovis. Hovis guarded by Nesby. She squares up to the basket. Tries Twist. to go in. Yep. Turns it over. Not a heavy. Turner, we're going to go back to the Columbus Grove. We'll go back to Columbus Grove. Yeah. Good job by Nesby. Again, Camille squares up, but Nesby just stayed a good, solid base and made her try to get past her and threw the ball out of bounds. So, Ock Moody up top with the ball, swings it over to Sage Clement. Clement tries to get it back to yeah, I think Souter. Souter gets a screen from Nesby, goes foul line, kicks it out. Three ball from the left side on the Foreman. way, and it's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Ock Moody. She does a great job of tracking it down, and she is fouled by Meredith Bockrath, and right away, Bockrath has yeah, two fouls. Two, and she, she is their defense specialist. Now she's going to have to sit probably a long time, not happy. She yeah, she, she's <laughs> out of the game. Yeah. And in the game now is Avery Unverfurth, the 5'10 sophomore, will replace her. Yeah. It's good, you know, it's unfortunately for Buckrath, that was a hustle foul. You know, she's hustling, trying to get the ball, and unfortunately she hits Ockmoody too hard there. Here's Ockmoody with the ball up top. She swings it around, ball stolen away, and a great job by Umberford to get the steal. She'll bring it down the middle of the floor. That's where Collada will set up shop. They're up 6-2, 4-16 to go here in the first quarter. Dribble drive, baseline on the left side. They'll kick it around, skip pass. Right to the oh, rim. Nesby and was just a half step late. Unverfurth is fouled on the shot. She'll go to the line for two. Oh, foul number two. Oh, yeah, they got Akmudi on the foul. That's her first. Team second. So Avery Unverfurth, the 5'10 sophomore who averages 2.6 a game, takes the first one, knocks that one in, and she gives the Wildcats the 7-2 lead on the Hawker Drive all scoreboard. So Kaleida will take Camille Hovist and give her a rest. They'll bring number five, Whitney, Whitney Unverfurth, into the game. She knocks in the second one, makes it 8-2 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. So all Kaleida here in the first quarter, up 8-2. And this little bit of uh, three, three half court, 3-2 three, half court traps, giving Grove a little bit of fits. They're just kind of confused of how they should attack it. Souter, nice. a little, oh, nice little give and go. You, yeah. you called it, Scott, right there. But uh, Nesby comes up the screen and she tries to slip yeah, through. She did, but Sauter just threw it just a little early. She would have held it just a split second. She had Nesby going to the basket. I like the play, but they'll sit Shelter. Sauter. Yeah, yeah, they'll sit her on the bench. And Kendall Palti will enter the game now for the Bulldogs, number 21, the five-seven freshman. So Columbus Grove is loaded with freshmen, Scott. Yes, they are. <laughs> they, Their future's bright. I oh, tell you. Oh, absolutely. So here come the Wildcats, up 8-2 with 3:37 to go. Uh, a gentleman before the game started was telling me that these freshmen as eighth graders averaged 50 points a game and they didn't shoot threes. Oh my. <laughs> so uh, they can put the ball in the basket. So that's kind of why you were seeing them a lot here in the, in the action here. There you saw number 23, right. Brooke Aaron. Earhart tries to dribble drive on the baseline on the left side and she steps out of bound. And if you could hear, you can hear the Crow student <laughs> section. They're right in front of us and they are loud and proud. Uh, they got a little rowdy right yeah. there. <laughs> so 3.13 to go. Kaleida leads 8-2. Here come the dogs Ooh, back again. That's a, great, that's a great drive by the freshman. She squared up. Nobody was there. She's like, all right, we're going hard to the rim, and you're going to have to foul me. Kendall Palti will go to the line. She's fouled. She'll two, shoot two. Earhart's foul. So, Scott, right now, Columbus Grove getting the shots close to the basket and really taking it to yeah. the Kaleida defense. And there she knocks that one in. The bank is open tonight. Entering the game now for the Clyde Wildcats, number 21, Addie Miller. The 5'5 sophomore. And Sauter back in for the Bulldogs. You knew she wouldn't be out long. No. <laughs> no, I'm sure that was part yeah. of it was that, you know, you just got to slow down just a bit. 
So she misses the second one. Kalida leads 8-3 with 3.02 to go. Here come the Cats back down again. Trying to push the ball out top. She's not about taking the three. They'll go around the perimeter. Girls defense. This is uh, pressure's gotten a lot more aggressive. Nice Romas. turn yeah, around, Romas. Malia Romas, the 6'1 freshman. And you can tell she's got a bright future yeah. in Kaleida land. Yeah. You know what right to do with it? She caught it, left shoulder, knocked that one down. Kaleida leads 10-3 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Dogs need something offensively. There's a dribble drive to the baseline. Let's nice. kick it out. Souter thought about shooting the three. She's going to kick it out to Clement. Clement turns around. Looks for Souter. Excuse me. Yep. They'll go to the right side. This is Souter from the right. Ball goes up and it's good. Bryn Fortman, the 5'6 senior, knocks in the triple, closes the gap to 10 6 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Good patience by the Bulldogs, too, to penetrate and kick, penetrate and kick. They gave up pretty, some good shots for a better shot. There's a dribble drive on the baseline. They kick it back out. Right, a very patient on offense right now as they lead 10-6. Nice there's cut. a nice cut there. Ball goes off Ooh, the good mark. Good job by Romez. There you saw number 21, Addie Miller, cut to the basket. Her teammate found her. She just missed the two-foot shot. Three ball from the left side for the dogs. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. It's picked up by, well, there's a foul out top. As Ockmoody went to get the ball, and she was bumped uh, out by the foul line. Yeah. The foul's on Honor for be her set, no first for Brittany Honor. That's her first. Yeah. yeah. Nesby back in. Neil Hovis back in. Minute 30 to go here in the first quarter. Kalina leads 10-6. So Columbus Grove finally finds the bottom of the net with a big time three. And they got a chance to close the gap here with 1.30 to go in the first quarter. Kalina maybe into like a little zone here, maybe. Ock Moody gets it into Clement. Clement back to Ock Moody. Nesby with the screen out top. Ock Moody looked to throw it into her, but she kept it herself. They'll screen for her again up top. Tries to go in the middle. Charge. And Ooh, yep. That's two on her. That's two it's on her. The heck of a charge. Way to step in there by Camille Hovis. Nice job by Hovis. And that's the second foul on Lauren Ockmoody. And she's definitely going to have to come out of the game with 118 to go. Makes it 10-6 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Stexley checks in then for the Bulldogs. So here come the Wildcats up 10-6. 112 to go here. Thought about taking the three. They'll dribble drive to the foul line, kick it back out top. This is Liv Wrecker with the ball, guarded by Clement out top. Wrecker dribble drives, a little spin move. Oh, she about thought about taking there. it up. Shot goes up, and it's off the mark. Here come the Bulldogs. Souter throws it down. She finds number five, Bryn Fortman. Fortman kicks it out. This is Souter with the ball out top. She'll kick it to Clement. Clement dribble drive to the middle. Thought about taking it up. Back to Souter, they'll set the offense up. Souter guarded out top by Whitney Unverfer. Swinging around. Abby Steckschulte goes back Ooh. to Bryn Fortman. Ball's almost stolen away. Record has by been a ball hawk. Oh, Ball goes out high, of yeah. bounds, they throw it away. They had Souter. Right in front of the Kaleida bench. Look for Grove maybe to see if they make an adjustment here coming in the second quarter. Kalata's really, really coming out on those uh, perimeter players. Yeah, they are. See if Grove goes back door and sets them up because Kalata's pretty susceptible with that, but the way they're really, really overplaying the perimeter players. Three ball from the left side, off the mark. Rebound comes down and it's snagged by Souter, but they're going to say there was a foul. I think they got Camille Hobus with yep. the foul. That'll be her second. So Kalida's starting to rack the fouls up here. They'll have Camille Hobus take a seat. Ock Moody checks in, probably to take the last shot here, 4.2. They'll bring, Cl yeah, Ramo, Ro, Romas, back, Romas, Romas, excuse me, comes back in the game. Four seconds to go. Three, I don't know if she realizes how much time's left. Shot goes up. Ooh, no. right on line, just a little <laughs> short. One more dribble, that would have been good. Just about there, so after one quarter from Ottawa Glendale High School, the Kalida Wildcats lead the Columbus Grove Bulldogs 10 6. You're watching high school basketball on WSN.
Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Hucker Drywall and Mustering. Visit us at HuckerDrywall.com to see how we can help you. So after one quarter, the Kaleida Wildcats lead 10-6. And Scott, I don't want to say that Kaleida dominated that first quarter, but in, until Columbus Grove hit the big three there at the end of the quarter, it was 10-3. Yeah, you're right. It, it, it was, but... <sighs> They didn't put them away. Right, that's what right, happens. That's a great you, point. You, you let a team hang around, and then they hang around and end up beating you. And I'm, I'm sure Lipsick probably could talk about that right now. So here come the Grove Bulldogs down 10-6, trying to find some offense. They'll get the ball into Cole Nesby, the freshman post player. Oh, the ball Scott got her. Oh, she did. I guess she only had one. I said she had two earlier. But look at look at this collide of defense. They come all the way out here to half court again. They're really susceptible right now for the backdoor cut. Let's see if Grove puts something in there. Either that or a slip. Coach Schrader's telling his kids to clear out, let his guards penetrate yeah. and go to the rim. This is Souter with the ball up top. She'll go dribble drive to the foul travel. line, and they're going to get a travel yes, on her. And you, you called that one, Scott. She absolutely drug her foot on that one. So. Yeah, she just tried to jump stop, took that extra step. Sometimes it's very difficult to get stopped. And unfortunately for her, she couldn't get stopped, had to take that extra little step. So this is Brooke Earhart with the ball. She's guarded by Clement up top. Columbus Grove in a man-to-man -man defense. And they need stops right now, down 10-6. Thought about taking three. She'll dribble dive baseline. Little spin move. Takes it up. It's a and tough it's shot. Good. Wow. Wow. You're right, Scott. That was a tough shot. Liv Ricker, Liv Ricker. the 5'5 five -five senior. There's a three ball from the Wide right open. side for the dogs. Goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to Kaleida. They'll pull straight up the floor. Middle of the floor. Thought about taking the three. They'll back it off. They go inside, Again. drive to the right side. That shot goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to Columbus Grove. Not real sure what they call here. We'll wait to see and get a call. We're at, we're at kind of a bad vantage point here. Yeah, we maybe can't out see of the bounds, baseline. Right. Yeah. So the ball will go back to Kaleida. They a called it a ball. jump ball. Yes sir. yes, sir, they did. They called it a jump ball. So Kaleida leads 12-6, 6.35 until halftime. Kaleida moving that ball around the three-point line. Working on trying to get into the Camille Hovis. The 5-9 post player, she sets a screen out top. Kick it back out. They go back into the middle. Nice spin move, she kicks it out. Three ball from the left side, off the mark. Rebound comes down to Souter. Souter gets it stolen away. It goes out of bounds, and they're going to say it's going back to Columbus Grove. So, ball will go back to Grove. And uh, getting a few opportunities here on the defensive end as they've held Kaleida here in the first yeah. few minutes of the second quarter. Just Kaleida's just doing a much better job of getting out to those perimeter shooters and not giving up penetration as soon as I say it. Right there is one. There's a three ball on the right side. Twice. Goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to Souter. Excuse me, to Bryn Fortman. Fortman pushes it inside into Cole Nesby. Cole Nesby tries to take it up. She's guarded by yes. three Kaleida players. She drops the ball. And ball. you notice that three ball, Scott, on the side was all because Akmudi got right. to the foul line. The defense collapsed. Yes. And, you know, got to give credit, number 22. She airballed in that Stexford and got another one. So Ock Moody will trigger the ball and underneath the basket. She gets it out to Sage Clement. Clement goes back to Ock Moody. Nicole Nesby comes out and screens for Ock Moody. Ock Moody dribble drive to the right side, tries to take it up. Ball goes off out of bounds. Yes, they're going to say it went off her leg. Good call, right. Scott. Good call. Yep. It'll go back to Kaleida. Great hands by, I don't know if that was Romez down there. Got her hand in there, knocked that one off uh, Ock Moody's knee out of bounds. Liv Recker brings the ball down. She gets it over to Andrea Burgai. Her guy gets a screen from the, excuse me, from Romez. They'll go out top, dribble drive on the right side. Romez screams for the ball, calls for it, wants the ball inside. They'll kick it back out. <laughs> Underfurst getting heckled by the crowd over here. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> There's oh, a near steal, yeah, see, and Bryn Fortman gets the steal. That's kind of exactly what Columbus Grove needed, maybe a, a steal and an easy basket. You notice Grove's got six points. Nothing's been easy so far tonight. Absolutely. In the last three possessions, Grove has played good defense, yes. but they haven't got anything on offense. There's Souter with a dribble drive. And cut off at the basket. She shoots it up. Ball goes off to Mark. Rebound comes down to Kaleida. Here comes Kaleida. This is Liv Recker with the ball. 
She'll go to the right side, tries to push the ball into, into Malia Romez. Romez with the ball, goes to the right side, shoots the ball, and it goes off the mark. And they're going to say there was a foul on yep. the floor. Yeah, they did. Romez might have got away with maybe almost a little travel. She loves to go that left shoulder. You know, as a freshman, being probably one of the tallest eighth graders around when she was in eighth grade, she, hard. she could easy go left shoulder, but, you know, get the varsity and scouting Absolutely. and everything else. A lot of teams knew that. She got she got lucky that they got uh, a foul called there. Ball comes out to Burgai. Burgai dribble drives to the right side. Go back into Romez. Romez with a little move, post move. She's going to have to kick the ball out, but there's another foul down on the baseline. No, I think Stexwardy just knocked that one out of, bounds. out of bounds. That was a good hustle there by Stexwardy. And good job by Nesby, too, to, to understand the scouting report because she jumps right to her left shoulder every time. Except that one, she was too quick for. Her. Might have got Stexley or Nesby. I don't. There you saw one of them. Yeah, Malia Romez catches the ball in the foul line. Doesn't hesitate. Puts the ball on the floor. Goes to the right side of the rim. Sure did. She is fouled. Nesby kind of came out flat-footed, and Romez won right around her. Malia Romez, the six-one freshman, averages three point seven a game. She knocks that one in. And she gives Collider a thirteen-six lead here in the second quarter. We're going to get a timeout we got here. a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Girls District Championship Action on WOSN. There's no admission fee to watch this game, but there's a cost for TV44 to broadcast it for you. Say thanks to viewers of TV44 by sending them a financial gift right now. TV44 relies on the donation of viewers to enable the airing of this game and all other locally produced programs. Donate now by visiting WTLW.com and click the donate button. So 423 to go here in the second quarter, and it's all Kaleida so far as they lead 13 to 6. Romez back to the foul line for her second shot. <laughs> <laughs> Both cheering sex were uh, finishing the song as they cut it off. It's kind of impressive. How dare the PA do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Clement kicks the ball out. They'll go Bryn Fortman down the left side. Fortman goes back to Clement. Nesby calling for the ball down low. This is Fortman gets a screen from Nesby. Foul line jumper, and it goes off the mark. Rebound comes down, and a big time rebound by number 24, Camille Hobus. They kick the ball down. Malia Romez was wide open. Yep. The pass was just a little too high for her. Goes out of bounds. And we go back to Columbus Grove. Grove tries to get a player in the game. Yeah. Oh, they, they hit the buzzer, and yep. uh, Coach Schrader said, no, play on. So here come the dogs. Ooh, Ooh thought, thought about a three it. ball. Yeah. <laughs> Kendall Paldy thought about chucking that one up, but they set it back up. This is Clement out top. Gets the screen from her post player. They go back down low, try to find Nicole Nesby down low, but the ball goes out of bounds. Souter comes in the game for the Columbus Grove. That puts Kendall Palti on the bench. So Clement will trigger out underneath their basket. Dogs down 13 to six. This is Souter with the ball, guarded by Romez. She's trying to get the ball to him. Oh, nice, nice cut, cut by Brent There's that Fortman. back door cut. Brent Fortman finds the bucket and makes it 13-8 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Here come the Cats, right back to Romez. Little jumper from the side, she knocks it in. Malia Romez, the 6-1 freshman, knocks in the deuce to make it 15-8 on the Hawker Drywall so scoreboard. Good. She's so quick and so good at getting that ball go hard left shoulder. And she gets a low post, man. She likes to go up with it. There you saw Sage Clement stick that arm out there, yeah, and no. the Kaleida faithful were all over her, and they wanted to, they wanted to push off right there. And I, I'll be honest, <laughs> yeah. she extended the arm a long way. Wrecker, Wrecker's been uh, right on her uh, tail the whole she time. Has. Yeah, so her, actually Miller, excuse me. Clement will take a seat. They'll bring Ockley back into the game. This is number two, Lauren Achmudi. She's the floor leader for the dogs. They go back to Bryn Fortman, over to Souter. Souter takes it over to Abby Stecksholdy. Stecksholdy guarded tightly out top. And they're going to get that's one on record. Live record. Yeah. It was all over Abby yeah. Stecksholdy. 
So 2.44 to go. Wildcats lead 15-8. I don't know if our viewing audience at home can hear <laughs> Coach Huber over there telling uh, Addie Miller when she was guarding Ock Moody what she's going to, she's like, she's going to the corner, now it's double screen. And then kind of got that familiarity of what we talked about. She misses the first shot. Here yes. comes Kalina right down the floor, putting the pressure on. Three ball from the top of the key. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to Souter. And there you saw Souter. Souter, excuse me, get up high and take that one. She gets it over to Achmedi. Achmedi guarded out top by Bergai. A really good matchup of two athletic players. Achmedi gets a screen out top. Thought about taking the three. She'll swing it around to Bryn Fortman. Bryn Fortman pushes the ball inside to Nicole Nesby. Nesby tries to go to the left side. She thinks gets the ball back in the post. Nesby to her right. Turns Clyde. the ball around. And Both fans are going crazy. Collada yeah. wants a three-second call. And well, she was in there for quite a long yeah, time. <laughs> Grove wants a foul. She's getting beat up in there. You know, I'm sure she's getting tired. It's, she's got to lean on Camille Hovis the whole time. And yeah. the defense. She's, she doesn't get a break because then they bring in Romance. But I'll tell you, Nesby's playing her tail off. She is. She absolutely is. And that's sure a, you're, you're unfortunate for her. She got the three-second call, but she was exhausted down there. Well, here come the Wildcats. This is Liv Record with the ball. Gets it over to Underford. Underford's take that. And they're going to say yeah, that's, a charge. that's a charge call. Well, Avery Underford. Well, ball goes back to grow. Final leads 15 to 8 with 156 to go. So you look at both these teams, Kalina offensively averages 43 a game and Columbus Grove 48 a game. And we're nowhere near that, Scott. So no, no, defense is the name of the game right now. Yeah, and a lot of that is because <laughs> every play, Coach Huber's calling out what's going on. Ock, <laughs> she just said, heck with it, I'm going to take it to the rim. Ock Moody goes up the left side. She's fouled. She'll go to the line and shoot, too. Season 18 of the Sports Report continues Friday night. Join Patrick Cameron for a full hour of the most comprehensive basketball coverage around all season long. Fridays at 10 p.m. on WTLW. So Lauren Ock Moody, the 5'6'' sophomore floor general for the Dogs. She knocks in the first one. Lauren's got three on the night. Makes it 15 to 8 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Off moving in the line, one shot. It's be to see how uh, Grove combats this. They got Hovis and Romas in at the same time, so Nesby can't guard both of them. She knocks in the second. She's got four points on the line. Makes it 15 to 10. Hawker drive off. Here comes Kalina down the side. This is Liv Recker with the ball. Gets it over to Whitney Underfirth. Underfirth. Gets a screen from Romes. Swinging out top to Camille Hovis. And we're back to Romes. And now it's decided height <laughs> advantage by the Kaleida Wildcats. And there you get a foul. An illegal screen out top by Camille Hovis. And I'll tell you what, Coach Huber is living on the sideline. That's three on the third. That's her third, third foul. foul. Yeah. My goodness. Oh, uh, Camille Hovis will take a seat with three fouls. That's going to bring a lot of the load to the freshman, Malia Romans, and she uh, will probably play the rest of the first half here. Here come the dogs. Three ball from the top of the key, and it's good! Lauren Ockmoody knocks in the triple, and it makes it 15 to 13 on the Hawker Drywall and scoreboard. The first shot that she was wide open, it was a heck of a screen by Nesby to get her a nice shot there. And she's that wide open, you know, you must just take it out of bounds because it's going in the net. She is an absolutely lethal shooter when she sets her feet and gets open. A couple Wildcats just swing it out top. This is the live record. Gets a screen out top from Romez. Romez falls back towards the basket. Record guarded by Clement out top. Looks to dribble drive. Pulls it back out. 32 seconds to go. Kalida very patient on offense. Record still with the ball. We're down to 23 seconds. Records at 15 seconds. Guarded by Clement. Swings the ball over to Avery Emberford. They go back to record. Dribble drive to the middle. Shot goes up and it's good. Liv 
Wrecker with the little finger roll, knocks it in to make a 17th three ball for the right side, off the mark. So after one half a play from Ottawa Glendorf High School, the Colorado Wildcats lead the Columbus Grove Bulldogs 17 to 13. We'll be back with second half action right after these messages. Welcome back to Ottawa Glendorf High School. We're at halftime here. The Clyde Wildcats lead the Columbus Grove Bulldogs 17 to 13. And Scott, let's take a look at the first half by the numbers. Yeah, first half first for the visitors, Columbus Grove Bulldogs. They were two of six from two points, one of six from three point range, five of seven from foul shots. They had four offense rebounds, nine defense rebounds, and six turnovers. For the home team, the Clyde Wildcats, they were five of nine from two, one of four from three, four of six from the foul line, three offensive rebounds, 12 defense rebounds, and six turnovers. And as you can see, both both teams did not light up the scoreboard. That's why we're at a 17-13. I think part of that is both teams are playing really, 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 really good defense and uh, pretty much running the play for the other team sure. on defense because they know what's going on. So let's see if a coach, what adjustments they made, see if they bring out some new plays that they haven't ran all year, or see if, like I said, Clyde is really, really, really coming out on the Raiders. Right. See if they get something back door. See if Clyde goes maybe Twin Towers with uh, Camille yeah. Hovis and yeah, right. Romez and goes some high-low stuff because I think they can exploit the Bulldogs if they do high-low. And I think the Bulldogs can uh, exploit the Wildcats if they get something on back north. And let's not forget, Camille Hovis for Kalida has three fouls, correct? Yes. And she was on the bench the end of the second quarter. So we've got to keep that in mind. And for yeah. Columbus Grove, uh, Lauren Ockmoody has three fouls. So, uh, you know, two really good players. Yes, right. Both teams, probably the best players of both teams have uh, three fouls. So we'll see what happens coming this second half here. And they've got two on the board for uh, Hovis, or for, excuse me, for, yeah, Hovis. I thought she had three. I'm yeah. almost positive she did. Yeah, right. And I, I don't know if Akmudi has three. I thought she had two. I don't know yeah. if she's got the three, so I don't know. I'm confused. But you know what? We'll go with it. So yeah, right. Kaleido gets the ball in the second or the second half here. They'll go right into Hovis. Nice yep. spin move. Ball goes off the marks. She clearly had Nicole Nesby beat to the basket. Here comes Akmudi down the floor. Yeah. With Buckrath on her, that she played about the first minute of the first quarter, and that's about all she got in. She got two quick fouls. There's a drive by Bryn Fortman. They'll kick it back out. Three ball on the way, and it's good. Come in, Ockmoody. Excuse me, Lauren Ockmoody knocks yeah. in the triple to make it 17 16 on the Hucker Drywall scoreboard. She just kind of got in traffic, and then they lost her, and she popped out for a wide open three again. She was open for two threes. She knocked them both down as Buckrath goes hard and she doesn't travel. Buckrath tries to take the ball to the middle and she just traveled right there to go back to Columbus Grove. So Columbus Grove with a chance here to take their first lead of the night, Scott, down 17-16. Yeah. And you gotta feel like Ockmoody's confidence level soaring right now. She knocked in the first shot of the second half. Absolutely. Here's Souter, dribble drive, foul line. She's gonna take a little 10-footer, goes off the mark. Ball's going to be held up, and they're going to say a jump ball. Camille Hovis and Nicole Nesby fighting for that ball. Nesby, I tell you, she hasn't scored, but she's done a lot of a lot of the dirty work inside. She's playing great defense inside. She's getting rebounds. I'm very impressed with yes, her. You are as absolutely freshman, correct. She's playing well. Souter with the ball on the wing. She's guarded by number 23, Brooke Earhart, and there's a ball gets away from Ockmoody, goes across, and they're going to say an over and back. Go back to Kaleida. So every time Grove gets a chance to make a yeah. run here, it seems like Kaleida steps up on the defensive end. Yeah, they do, and that was a good job by Rector to get up there and take that away. Here's Camille Hovis taking it against Nesby, and I'm here to tell you, Scott, I know what they talked about at halftime. <laughs> yeah, I bet, I bet, get the ball to number 24. Because <laughs> Camille and Hovis has touched it twice, and she's went to the rim two times. Yes. They get her here, this is the third touch of the second half for Camille Hovis. She's out on the perimeter. She'll get the ball to number 20, Liv Wrecker. They'll swing it back around to the right side. This is Meredith Brookhart 
kicks it over to Harris. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> Back to Bachrath, into Kobe again. And there's the foul on Nesby. Nicole Nesby, the 5'11 freshman. She's got three now. And I, I think she's a key because they can't afford to lose her inside. She does such a good job defending the paint. There's a nice lob into number 23 for the Cats, Brooke Earhart. She misses that shot. Ball goes out of bounds. And they're going to say it stays with Kalina. 6.14 to go. 17-16. Alma Hawker Drive all scoreboard. Danny Holbrook, Scott Mag from Ottawa Glendorf High School. The district championship on the line in Division IV. Okay. There's a near steal by Ock Moody. Double drive. Ooh, go to the middle. Great job by Nesby just to wall up. And, uh, Earhart tried to go to the rim, and she's just thwarted. I think it was Buckrath, actually. Here's Ock Moody oh, out top. going to shoot that. It's a screen from Nesby. They'll go to Clement, back to Fortman. Fortman dribble drive baseline, kicks it back out to Clement. Clement will go back to Souter. Souter gets it out to Ock Moody. Ock Moody guarded out top by Meredith Bachrath. Ock Moody dribble drive on the left side, goes between her legs, kicks back. Thought about taking the three. And they're going to say she held the ball. Oh, I don't know about that, but uh, yeah. that's the call made. I think she kind of palmed it a little bit. Yeah, stuttered. and. And kind of took it with her a little bit. That, that doesn't really get called that much. <laughs> I was going to say, that's exactly what I was going to yeah, say, Scott. I, I haven't seen that called in a long time. Yeah, but she probably <laughs> did, but doesn't get called that much. Hey, the officials done a great job tonight. So, yes, they have. <laughs> so here comes Kalina up 17 16. They'll go back into Camille Hovist. Hovist takes it right to the rim. A little spin to the left. Shot goes up, and she oh. knocks it in. And if that's a foul, if that yeah, foul that is on. Oh, they're going to call it on Camille yeah. Hovis. My goodness. They're going to say she extended that arm, and that is her third foul. Now, we thought she had three yeah, coming into the, the half. The guy just said four. I don't know. The, the board says, board says three. three. I, <laughs> I'm confused. Somebody's wrong, right? Yeah, absolutely, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> but nonetheless, Hovis is going to the bench, and Romas comes in. So they'll bring Malia Romez back in, the 6'1 freshman. Here comes Aqua, who gets away from the pack. She'll go middle of the floor, kicks it back out. Bryn Fortman dribble drive. This is Clement. She thought about taking three, goes to the foul line. Left hand and takes it up. Rebound comes down, corralled by the Wildcats. They'll bring it down the middle floor. This is Wrecker with the ball. Swings it over. She thought about shooting yeah. the three. <laughs> Brooke Earhart loaded up and was going to shoot that three. Sure did. Burgeye with the ball out top. She's guarded by Fortman, trying to find Romez inside, push the ball in. Romez with the oh, catch nice and a pass. nice job. She just missed that one. Yeah, she, did. she cleared space and there was a beautiful pass into Romez. Here comes Clement down the floor. Bryn Fortman from the three line, off the mark. Rebound comes down to Kalina. This is Meredith Bachrath. She goes to the rim, oh, this, loses the ball. The yeah, they're going to say a travel on that one. He so it's the ball and caught it, can't catch your own pass. All kinds of action here. Yeah. And I think Buckrath just is a little out of control on that one. Whitney Humphrey first to check in for the Lady Wildcats, and Andrea Burgai will take a seat. I think a little bit of the Kaleida halftime was to attack the rim. Oh, right? absolutely. I mean, <laughs> because they are going with vengeance to the rim. You are absolutely right, Scott. Here comes Ock Moody. And to no avail for the Wildcats. I mean, they were attacking. Basically, we've had four minutes, and Akmudi's corner deep three is the only points of the quarter. Lauren Akmudi thought about throwing that yeah. one up. She gets the screen from Nesby. Oh, three ball, her. nobody up. Gardner, she knocks Can't it in. That. You said it, Scott. Lauren Akmudi, when she's wide open, she knocks it in. Yeah, you might as well take it out of the net. And the dogs have their uh, first lead of the night at 1917. Yeah, they had Nesby and. Uh, Romez came up to help, and then she left her. You can't leave a shooter. Doesn't matter. If you can't guard her or not. Absolutely. Adam Huber's going to take a timeout. Yeah. We'll take a timeout of the move. You're watching High School Basketball WOSN.
Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Hucker Drywall and the Plaster. Visit us at HuckerDrywall.com to see how we can help you. So 3.56 to go here in the third quarter. Columbus Grove Scott gets their first lead of the night. Yeah, and, and you know what? If I, I think I read lips right, but I'm going to say Coach Huber says, you can't leave her. She's too good. <laughs> she, it's <laughs> obvious she's three for three. There's a dribble drive up the Ooh. left side. I nice shot by Nesby to deter that a little bit. You called it all night. Nicole Nesby has just been a force on the defensive end. And you saw Kalina try to take it to her. And she just walled up. The ball goes out of bounds and right. we're back to Kalina. And she's doing such a good job of really not getting many fouls called down there. As much action as she's had, she's had three fouls. A couple of them were she was in the wrong place at the wrong time. But for the most part, she's done a great job of controlling that paint there. There's a dribble drive in the middle by the Kalina Wildcats. Goes off the mark. Here come the dogs. Stolen away. Meredith Bockrath with the steal. She takes the length of the court. Goes up in the middle. And she is fouled by Souter underneath the basket. Meredith Bockrath will go to the line to shoot two. And do you enjoy games like this one? Are you thankful for the chance to showcase our local high school teams on TV? Please consider making a donation to TV44 so we can keep airing games just like this one. Donate online right now at WTOW.com or send a gift by phone by calling 419-339-4444. And thank you. Buckrath missed her first shot of the night. She came out, she hit a two, she nailed three, and then she got a couple fouls as she sat most of that first half. And you talked about it, Scott, the first half. The foul shots were keeping these te teams in the game here in the, right. in the second half. There's two misses right there. So here come the dogs. This is Clement, brings the ball down. She'll go back to Souter. Souter dribble drives in the middle. Nobody stops her. Kick it out to Bryn Fortman. Thought about shooting the three ball. She'll go back to Clement, trying to push the ball down. And Nicole Nesby is just trying to get position down the post. She'll come up to the high post where she'll try to scream. She'll roll the basket. They'll bring it back out to Souter. Back in and Nesby. Great ball goes hustle. away. Wow. Great hustle by her guy diving and knocked that one out of the way. Wow. Ball go back to Tell Columbus Grove. <laughs> Danny, I, these girls are getting all they got here. They're not saving anything for tomorrow, are they? <laughs> getting a little excited over there. Wow. They're giving it all. There's a district championship That's on the line, right. buddy. That's right. <laughs> Bragging rights for a year. <laughs> yeah. Beat us by one. We got you. We want to get you back. <laughs> Here's Souter, she'll dribble drive to the foul line. Kicks it inside to Nesby. Nesby guarded by Romez down low. She'll kick it back out. <laughs> Every <laughs> shoot it, shoot it. Everybody wants that young lady to shoot the ball. Yeah, she does a good job. Let her go, guys. <laughs> oh, almost a travel there. Yeah. They'll go back in Nesby. Nesby goes to the middle, spins back around. A nice move, and it's blocked block. by Romez. A big time block by Malia Romez. Sure and the was. Cats will bring it down, down 19 17 with 2.31 to go on the Hucker Drywall scoreboard. I think uh, Romez's long arms are about as long as her legs, too. My man. goodness. Big, she extends that arm. Big, she's. 5'10", listen, 5'10", with them arms makes her 6'4". Well, get used to Malia Romez yeah. and Nicole Nesby battling because they're <laughs> right. both freshmen. This right. is a four-year war, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> both going to know each other quite well, aren't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. There's a three ball from the left side. Way up in the air, and she drains it. Are you kidding me? Yes. My Unferred. goodness. Whitney Unferferf, the 5'7", yeah. junior, knocks in triple. And that's what Clyde needs to open up the outside as Clement dribbles off her foot. So a nice little run here for the Wildcats as they get the lead back. And the ball goes out of bounds. It'll be back to Kalina with 1.53 to go. And a 2019 lead for the Wildcats. Nesby gets a well-deserved oh, rest here. He that, that young lady has, hasn't had a break all night. Well, you look down there now, and Jalen Souter, the 5'8 senior, is trying yeah. to guard the 6'1 freshman uh, and a decided advantage on height down there. Let's see if Kalina tries to expose that advantage here. Yeah. Nice back cut, takes the ball up, Ooh. shot goes off the mark, a lot of contact yes, there sir. as Brooke Earhart misses the shot. There you saw 21, Kendall Palti fake the shot, they'll kick it back out. This is Ock Moody with the ball. It's a screen from Souter. Step back, looks for Souter in the middle. Souter gets the, a nice job of getting the ball away. And Bryn Fortman corrals it, and they're on the ground. And they're yes. going to say a tell you what, held ball out. there. <laughs> Fortman just got level. And Souter said a, uh, tell you what, football coach, pro football coach <laughs> might want to get her because that was a decleaner, man. I'm she said, she laid the wood on that cleat. 
on that screen. Her and I went flying, and I seen her face is like, oh, what just hit me? Well, the Grove student section was chanting, let's play football. Yeah. Wow, was that a heck of a screen. And it was a legal screen. I'm, not, I'm not no, trying no, to say no, it was no, a no. dirty screen. She was a great position, did everything right, but she made sure her two mates were going to get open. So here comes Kaleida up, 2019, 53 seconds to go in the third quarter. They'll swing it around the perimeter. Trying to go down low, kick it back out. Here's a dribble drive by Unverford. Takes it up, shot goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to Brooke Earhart. She goes up the left side, left hand, and she puts it in. Brooke Earhart, the 5'8 senior, knocks in the deuce, and she makes it 22-19 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Yep. Ooh, they just missed Paulie underneath. So here's Souter with the ball out top. Ball's down 22-19. We're at 22 seconds. Earhart is killing her. Yeah, she's. <laughs> you saw that foul. That was coming. <laughs> that that might have been due to that hard screen that was said earlier. I, you know, as a player, I hated that. Get, get that hard screen. And now goes Brian Schrader yeah. with the dogs. Do you see what she's doing? He's doing with Akmu. He's yeah. playing offensive defense with her. And then nesby has got to come back in here. So wholesale changes. This is like a hockey line coming right. in for everybody. So trying to get fresh bodies in there with 21 seconds to give some of those players a, Look for, a uh, quick Aquil break. Step in. Ooh, I thought she'd step back on this one. So Grove will take the ball out and gets the ball into Bryn Fortman. Fortman's played a nice game tonight. She's really steady with the ball. This is Akmudi up top. She's guarded by Meredith Bachrath. We're down to 10 seconds. Akmudi with the ball. Tries to go to the right side. Goes back to the oh, middle. She's wow. left alone. Three ball on the hey. way. Off wow. the mark. Rebound comes down to Kaleida. They're pushing down the floor. And that's off the mark. So after three quarters of play from Ottawa Glendorf High School, the Kaleida Wildcats lead the Columbus Grove Bulldogs 22-19. When we come back, the district championship will be decided. Welcome back to Ottawa Glendorf High School. The scoreboard is presented by Hucker Drywall and Master. You can us at HuckerDrywall.com to see how we can help you. So after three quarters of play, the Glendorf Wildcats lead 22 to 19, and a little bit of an advantage for Grove in that quarter. Yeah, right. They, they outscored them six to six to five, but you know Glendorf scored a couple late. Uh, but I think Grove is starting to get some shots. They're starting to figure out this switching defense. So we're we're. Uh, it's a heck of a game here. We got eight more minutes. <laughs> we got the crowd into it. It is right. really, really loud in here. Very physical game. So Ock Moody will get the ball. She's guarded out top by Meredith Bachrath. Ock Moody gets a screen out top from Souter. She'll go to the right side. Souter was calling for the ball. She was yeah. waving her arm. She really Buckrath kind of went with Ock Moody. They both did. Akmudi held the ball against her side there, but she lets go yeah. just in time. Could have been a disaster there. There's dribble drive. Akmudi up the right side, gets the ball up, and she's going to be fouled underneath the basket. And it looks like they're going to get Meredith Bachrath on the foul there. And she'll go to the line to shoot two. Yep. So Akmudi, the leading scorer for the Dogs tonight. She's got 13 of the 19. She'll go to the line shooting two. First one on the way, and it's good. She's got 14, makes it 22 20. 737 to go on the Hucker Dry Wall scoreboard. I do have a comment to make, but I won't make wait until she makes this foul shot here. <laughs> I don't want to be the announcer jinx. That's right. Second one is up on the way, and it's good. It's a 22 so, By my unofficial stats, I have her not missing only one shot. She's 5 of 5 from the foul line, 3 of 4 from threes. She is very efficient tonight. <laughs> yeah, she She's sure is. Everything the dogs needed. But hey. she has been hounded all night as well <laughs> yeah, from the uh, Wildcat, Lady Wildcat. There you see Camille Hovis calling for the ball. Ooh. The ball deflected away. That one. She did. Quick You're hands down right. there. That was impressive. There's. Hovis with the ball, nice move, back in the defender in. Rebound comes down, goes back up. Kaleida gets a second chance, and I think they're going to get Nesby on the foul. I think you might be right on that one. Two-shot foul here, so Bach round at the line. No, they're going to nope. say Scott Bryn Fortman with the Three. foul. Nope. Sauter. Sauter, excuse yep. me, I'm sorry. Sauter with the foul, and that puts Meredith Bachrath at the line. 
She knocks in the first one to make it 23-21. So Avery Emerson checks back in for Kalila. One more shot for Bakia. She knocks that second one in. Makes it 24-21 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. So here comes Ock Moody with 15 on the night. 15 of the dogs, 21. Can she score some more here? And she's got the ball up top. Gets it to Bryn Fortman. Fortman gets a screen from Nesby. They'll go back to Bakia. Shot about step back three from the side. Oh, and it oh, rolls in. Man. Are you kidding me? That's the shooter's <laughs> roll, I believe. Lauren Ock Moody gets it. Another triple, yeah. and it's 24 all on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. And we got a lot no of contact ball. down low, and, and there was Coach abs Huber wants something. I don't know what no call. They don't even have any. Either officials didn't call anything. What are they going to call? Not a call made. Not a call wow. made. And there Nothing. was a lot of contact there. 640 to go. Yeah. Kalida takes it out underneath their basket. I think both faithful not happy. We'll go back into Hovis. Hovis turns to the left. Shot goes up and it's good. Camille Hovis knocks in the two. And she's fouled up to, or down by low Nesby. by Nicole Nesby. Yep. You know, she's too good to be, you know, held scoreless. You know, that she just dribbled drag quick to the right shoulder, banked it off the glass. That's impressive for the senior. You know, she doesn't want to go home. She doesn't want the season to be over. That was a heck of a move. Nesby's going to have to come to the bench. Nesby goes, takes his seat. Neil Hobus will go to the line to finish the old-fashioned three and see if she can give the Cats the three-point lead. Shots up, and it's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Souter. And it's 26-24 on the Hunter Drywall scoreboard. This is Clement on the right side. Goes back to Ock Moody. Ock Moody guarded out top by Meredith Bockraft. Now they'll switch over Avery Unfer. Go inside to Souter. Souter, foul line. Looks to shoot, kicks it back out. Paulty, Dribble nice. drive, Paulty to the middle. Oh, wow. Shoots the ball, but it goes underneath the rim. and caroms out to Kalida. Kalida with the ball, up 26-24. So there you see Camille Hovis down low. The Kaleida, uh, the Grove fans are like one to three second call that they got on Nesby earlier. There's Hovis, put your shoulder down, drives in. This is the shot. Here comes Clement down the middle, and she is tripped up by Camille Hovis. And that accidental trip, but they're going to get her on the call. Yeah. And that will make four fouls for Camille Hovis. And she's going to have to come out of the game, Scott. And yes, she really, is. Coach Huber is going to have to make a decision on when to bring her back in right. with 5.46 to go. Yeah, but at least a minute. She wasn't happy. She was pleading her case, but the official didn't want nothing yeah. to do with it. <laughs> you can plead all you want yeah, once right. that foul's called. Yeah, you're done. So here comes Columbus Grove down two with 5.40 to go. Ock Moody out top. She goes to the foul line. High post. She'll swing it back to Souter. Souter will go back to Ock Moody. Ock Moody got it out top by Bachrath. Kendall Paulty goes off to the yeah. left side. So, they? yeah, they're going to basically go her ball in her hand. Oh, wow. Step back three on the way, and it's good! Oh, my goodness! Lauren Ock Moody! Wow. Oh. Five of six. And see, good oh. adjustment by Brian Schrader to go four low. Instead of going those ball screens and switching it, they let her go to work. Dribble in the basketball. Great adjustment by Brian. So at 5.07 to go, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs lead the Wildcats to come out at 27-26. We'll have more action right after these messages. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Hawker Drive. Last week, we this Hawker Drive. Help you. Scott, you ever seen one of those games where one player is absolutely in a zone? Yeah. That young lady has 21 of the 27 points. And yeah. what's those stats again? Yeah. That's unbelievable. She is five of six from three and <laughs> six of six from the foul line. She's missed one shot and a great adjustment. We'll see what uh, Adam, Coach Adam Huber does because they can't now switch every screen. Every They're going one four and put the ball in her hand and let her go to work again. That's amazing. You're going to your bell cow, and she's going to try to take it to the promised land. They're going to try to push the ball down to Rojas. Yeah. Right. And she is guarded no down doubt. low by Souter. There's a dribble drive to the Ooh, foul line. That Almost went, a man, travel. Foul. Yeah, you're absolutely right. They'll kick it back out to Burgai. Burgai up top, guarded by Clement. She waits on the screen from Romez up top at the high post. They'll kick it back out. This is Bachrath with the ball. Guarded by Ock Moody. 
There's a dribble drive from Earhart. Oh. Earhart throws it out of bounds. Yeah. It'll go back to the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. I thought maybe it was a travel because she took a couple steps. I think she got the bump and just tried to throw the ball, thought, thinking she's going to get a foul, but unfortunately, she threw the ball out if you're a Lady Cats fan. What's impressive right now about what Ock Moody is doing, Scott? She's stepping back. Like yeah. <laughs> well, she's, again, she's so good with the ball in her hand that you've got to honor when she wants to go hard. The dribble, you got to honor that. Three ball from Clement on the left side. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. They're fighting for the ball. And they're going to say that's a no. They're going to get Bryn Fortman on the foul. And I thought they were going to get a held ball. And for Bryn Fortman, first. That's her first foul. So Coach Huber's got to make a decision here with 4.21 to go when he brings Camille Hovis back in the game. Dogs lead 27-26. This is Wrecker with the ball. She'll swing it around the left side. And, you know, almost impressed if, if that's right with Akmudu with three fouls. She's basically played the whole Done second, great job, third, yeah. and half this fourth quarter with not committing a foul. Burgeye with the ball. She'll dribble drive up the left side with the ball in her hand. 90% of the time on offense. Swing it back to Wrecker. Wrecker guarded by Clement. Wrecker goes foul line. Ooh, ooh. Almost yeah. <laughs> travel. We'll go back to Wrecker up top. Looking for Romez down low. She had post position on Souter, but they didn't give the ball to her. Yeah. So they'll she swing had. it around. Burgai with a screen by Romez out top. Burgai goes foul line. Tries to go back to Romez. And Columbus Grove doing a great job of taking that and sure pass is, away. But, you know, Romez, once she becomes a senior, I guarantee she'll be screaming one like Camille Hovis was. There's a nice backdoor cut by yep. Unverfer, and she gets fouled. She's going to go to the line, and she'll shoot two. So you saw Avery Unverfer go baseline on the yep. right side, gets position, gets a nice shot. And Columbus Grove was lucky she didn't knock that down. Yeah. Good job. They, uh, Paulie is face is red. She's a little tired. She got beat on the back door. Avery Underford knocks that one. Away. She's been battling. She has. They're going to let Romez take a seat. All right, now Nesby's in. Nicole Nesby comes back in. Cole Nesby has four fouls. Second one on the way. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Awkward. We are all tied up yep. at 27. See if they go one four low. Nesby gets a, out top to get a screen for Awkward, but they jump on top of that one. See when you go this, now they go four low because they got a mismatch. They got a post player guarding her. Unverf was trying to control yeah, Ockman. Nice. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, they got a they foul. Got foul. And the official on the right side didn't call it, but right. the official down low, and that's got Coach Huber upset. You saw the same thing yeah. I did. And not that the, she, the, the, the she, call was right. Yeah, she got a lot of ball, but she did get a little bit of the wrist. And, yeah. And uh, it deterred Ockmoody from getting in the lane and losing the ball. So Take the ball out of bounds here, so watch her down screen here, right here. Nesby America's swings play. It Ooh, nice. Go back to Souter. Souter goes middle of the floor. She'll bring it back out on the perimeter. Gets Nesby down low. Nesby catches it. Looks for help. Swings it around. Bryn Fortman on the left side. They'll go Ock Moody. Ock Moody up top. She's guarded by Underfer. Nesby tries to set a screen. They jump on top of that. Back into Nesby. Oh, ball great job collected. by... Ball goes oh, down the middle. Guy. Here yep. comes up record down the middle. She'll take it up. And they're going to say charge. a charge. Yes. And an unbelievable job by Ock Moody. She yeah. ran down the left side. She got in position to take the charge. And that's exactly what she yeah. did. And, and that's the right call. And she just ran her over. Record should have probably jump stopped and made a pass because she had a teammate coming down the side. Good job by Brian Schrader here calling timeout. I think his girls are a little exhausted right now. Good idea to get a timeout. With 2.44 to go, we'll take us a timeout here. When we come back, we'll have the exciting conclusion of the girls' division four district time. Welcome back to Ottawa Glendorf High School with 2.44 to go. We're all knotted up at 27. Ed Hilbert Scott Mag at the girls' division four district title game. And it has been everything we wanted it to be. Yeah, it's been, it's been two, it's been a prize fight, right? It has this been. last this fourth quarter, each team's <laughs> sending those haymakers at each other, and each of them are answering. It's it's quite a heck of a game here. So Columbus Grove will bring the ball down, knot it up at 27. We're gonna get a foul. No, I think it just took out of bounds. The ball goes out of bounds. Yeah. Buckrath. She's gonna sleep well tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Souter will trigger the ball in front of the Columbus Grove faithful. Gets the ball over to 
her teammate, Lauren Ockmoody. Ockmoody dribble drives. And they're going to say she carried the ball. And look, uh, it's not very often called, but that <laughs> was the right call yes, right there. She, she absolutely held the ball there. And look who's coming back in, Camille Hovis. Yep. Remember this, Scott, with 2.34 to go, Camille Hovis comes back into the game. Now, Hovis doesn't have a lot of points, but her presence on the defensive end is huge right now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and not only that, but now she can attack Nesby, who also has four fouls. So Bergai with the ball out top, guarded by Clement. Get it over. Out to the right side. Back to Bergai, back into Hovis. Hovis spins around, goes to the middle, turns around, takes it up, and knocks it in. Camille Hovis knocks in the jumper. She gives the Lady Cats the 29-27 lead, and they almost, almost throw the got ball it. out. Yeah, good job by Wrecker, almost getting that one. So you, you called that one to a T. They take it right at Nesby with four fouls, and she really just had to stand there and couldn't defend like she normally had with her physicality. Right. And uh, well, Camille Hovis knows that. She's so good. She spins, 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 and she always wants to go back to that left shoulder. And she baits you to go left, and then she comes spinning right back to that right, right shoulder, and she can score when she gets in there. Good There's a by steal. Wrecker. Steal by Wreckers. She gets the ball down low. Shot goes up, and it's blocked. No call. But those back hustle. to the dogs. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. Is her okay? She got her knee oh. bent back. Hope she's all right. She jumps up. Wow, no, that's. No. <laughs> Souter went down hard, and her knee got. Yeah. So the call on the floor Buckrath. is a foul on Bachrath. Be fourth. That's her fourth. Yep. So that will send Jalen Souter to the line. I was a little worried that her knee got because that she got bent over and wow. I'm thank goodness she's okay because her knee that, that looked did, a lot worse than it was. Oh, My it sure did. Her knee was twisted and she fell over someone. Jalen Souter. I guess maybe I've seen too many injuries on my <laughs> side. So. Jalen Souter has zero on the scoreboard, looking to get her first point, and she does just that. She makes it 29-28 with 1.59 to go. She's done a heck of a job playing defense. She absolutely Dribbling has. the basketball. Second one on the way. Setting up screens. Good. Makes it 29-29 on the Hopper Drywall yeah. scoreboard. So here comes Record in the Cats. Looking to go back in the lead. She goes over to Earhart. Earhart gets a screen from Hovis. Goes back to Hovis. He'll swing it around. This is under first. She gets it back to Wrecker. Wrecker guarded by Clement out top. Hovis comes way out top. Nesby's going to let her get it. I was way just going to say, Nesby's going to let her catch yeah. it way out there. Right, but almost a near steal from Souter. And behind the back from Booker Earhart. She goes middle of the floor. She'll kick it back out. There's dribble drive to the foul line. Shot goes up. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. And Hovis with a huge rebound. And that gives the Cats another shot. They'll Spin. go back into Camille Hovis. She loses the ball, kicks it back out. Three ball all the way from the left side. Off the mark. Rebound Nesby, comes down to Nesby. Out. Wow, she... Nesby gets the ball knocked away from her. And they're, out, they're, yep. Yeah, they're going to give Coach Schrader a timeout. And a nice play for Coach Brian Schrader. And we'll take a timeout with 1.06 to go. Welcome back to Ottawa Glendorf High School. We're with one minute and six seconds to go. We are all knotted up at 29 in the girls' division four district title game. So Scott, put your coach's hat on. What are you gonna do if you're Columbus Grimm? Well, I, we were kind of talking off air. Yep. I said last shot, I was kind of agreeing with you, but I'm gonna put it in number two's hands and everybody get the heck out of her way and let her win us a game. Or if not, we're going to overtime, take our chances. That's exactly what they're gonna do here. Yep. Moody gets the ball. And we are right at one minute of play left in the girls division four district championship game. This is yeah. Fortman gets it back to Ockmoody. Ockmoody guarded out top by Bachrath. You're gonna get a screen from Nesby. We're and down I think to the only five. do that just to get her off to get Buckrath right. off her because they've been switching every screen all night. So she's she's pretty comfortable guarding against Hovis. Hovis guarding Ockmoody out top. Ockmoody almost loses the ball. Looks for help. Souter comes way yeah. out top. Good We're at 30 seconds. That's Sauter great job. Understand that. She understands that. We're at 26 seconds. Ock Moody with the ball, guarded by Hovis. Hovis with four fouls. Ock Moody goes to the middle, kicks it out to Clement. Clement goes back. We're at 19 seconds. Here goes Ock Moody to the middle, takes oh, it inside. Nice pass. Nesby with the shot, and she knocks it in. The freshman with the 
a huge bucket, and it's 31-29. Here comes Kalida trying to get the shot off. Shot goes to the middle. And we got a timeout time out. from Coach yeah. Huber with 5.3 seconds to go. We'll take our final timeout. You're watching High School Girls Basketball on WLSN. Welcome back to Ottawa Glendorf High School where you are watching an unbelievable game by these two league rivals. And, and Scott, who would have thought uh, at the beginning of this game that you would see the freshman, Nicole Nesby, take the shot, knock it in, and give the dogs the two-point lead? Well, I mean, you're right. No one thought she was going to take it. <laughs> but a heck of a job by Moody to get her that shot because she penetrated, and I think five girls came to her because, again, a lot of thought just like we thought. Right. She was going to take the last one. Nesby caught it, went hard in. We'll see what happens here. Kalida's going to take the ball out yep. on their end. Look for Hovis in the paint. We got Earhart going to the left with her left hand scoring inside. 5.3 seconds to go. They throw it up high to Hovis. Hovis, three ball on the way, and it's off the mark. Columbus Grove's going to win it. Columbus Grove, three-tenths of a second. Yep. A little premature on that one, but the shot went off the mark. And Columbus Grove gets the rebound with three ten. A great play by the guests. Yes, it was and open, yes. Here's the thing, Scott. I love the aggressiveness. They went yeah. for the win. They right. absolutely went for the win. Yeah, they did. And, and you know, Ur Camille Hovis could have scored that, but she threw it out to a wide open record. Just a little long. And she's, she's really struggling right now. She's fighting back the tears because she knew that she had a shot, and I just feel sorry for that young lady. Hawk being a senior. Line. She'll go to the line. She's got 21 of the 31. First one on the way. And it's good. And it is good. Lauren Ock Moody. Seven of seven. Seven of seven from the line. Second on the way, and it's good. Eight of eight from the yes, line. Sir. 329 and that is it. The Columbus Grove Bulldogs win the district title by a score of 33 to 29. Scott, your final thoughts. Wow, I can tell you a heck of a game. You know, they always say cream rises to the top, and I'll tell you, Moody, she sure came to play. She put her team on the back, especially that halfway through that third in the fourth quarter. My heart goes out to Kalata because they played their tails off trying to guard her. She was just so good at scoring, you know, because she, with the ball in her hand, she's a very tough defend. Step back three, she knocked down, and it was her night tonight, unfortunately, for the Wildcats. It wasn't their night. They had the look. I feel bad for the record girl. She had a shot, just missed it. Good look. She probably makes that eight out of 10 times. And that'll do it from Ottawa Glendorf High School. The Columbus Grove Bulldogs advance to the regional semifinals with a 33-29 win. Congratulations to the Bulldogs on the district championship. For Scott Mag, I'm Danny Holbrook, and our entire WOSN family, God bless, and we'll see you down the tournament trail. All right, we're back here with Coach Brian Schrader. Coach, a great win for your girls tonight. Yeah, thank you very much. It was uh, a game with two familiar opponents, uh, two PCL teams just kind of slugging it out and wasn't always pretty offensively, but um, like I said, just a, a really a good defensive game and just thankful we came out on top. Talk about your leader on the floor, Lauren Ockmoody. What a, a terrific game she had tonight. Yeah, just a, a phenomenal game by her, kind of offensively putting her, uh, putting us on her shoulders and, and kind of, I think she had 23 points out of our 33 points. She got into a little bit of a foul trouble uh, early on and, and, you know, was able to kind of weather the storm and make some big plays at the end. And, you know, as many points as she scored, it was an assist at the end of the night that kind of gave us the go-ahead bucket. Did you talk to your kids any this week about the last time you guys played in December? Not a whole lot. I mean, other than some of the things that they did against us that were effective and, and some, some things that we had to change about our defensive schemes and offensive schemes and ways that we thought we could kind of attack them. But, um, you know, not for the most part. We kind of, I guess, flushed that game away and, and moved on. And, um, yep, that's pretty much it. Well, congratulations, Coach. Go celebrate with your kids. Good luck in the regionals. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Coach Brian Schrader from the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. We're back here, back here with Lauren Ockmoody. Lauren, what an incredible game. Talk about your team's performance tonight. Uh, I say we played pretty good. Uh, we were just trying to focus on, like, communicating and 
if we were down, not to give up. We had a tough game Thursday, so we were just trying to come in as strong as possible. You were eight for eight from the free throw line and five of six from the threes. Did you feel like you were in the zone? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> once I hit a couple, I was like, I'm getting in the groove. I'm going to keep shooting. Once I saw other people open, I was like, I'm going to dish it to them. But I was open, so I was just shooting. When you found Nesby for that last bucket there to win the game, what were you thinking when you drove to the middle? Uh, originally, I was going to do a jump shot, but as soon as her girl came out, I was like, she has a way better shot than I was ever going to get, so I just dished it down. These guys are your number one fans back here. Let's hear it, guys. <laughs> Lauren Ock, Moody, Columbus Grove, big win in the district finals.